Okay. So we are starting the anterior segment examination. And so you are going to ask me, well, we are not junior doctors to tell us what is the slit lamp and how to use the slit lamp. So I will ask you a question after the end of this, uh, after we full, we complete the full uh, anterior segment examination. And I will guarantee for you that there are secrets in the sit lamp examination that you have never heard about and you didn't know before this lecture. So I will keep my word and I will ask you after we finish that if everything in this lecture you have heard about and you will tell me. So what is the importance of this lecture? Well, actually, in the, in the era before the online exams, the, all everything about the sit lamp is asked starting from the illumination techniques, also the filters, and how to do uh, different kinds of examination and the examiner is observing you. Also, all kinds of lenses are asked. And you may be surprised to tell you very strange things uh, or very strange examination techniques that you, you may not even hear about for intraocular pressure uh, measurement or for uh, or for angle assessment, and also for something like calibration of the uh, the application trigonometry. So actually, one of my colleagues have uh, have once been asked to the, the examiner asked her to give uh, the, he told her give me a lecture on a sit lamp or tell me the anatomy of the sit lamp. So everything about sit lamp is important because simply if you don't if you are not fully aware about everything about the sit lamp, then you are not practicing. So we will make this lecture as comprehensive as possible to cover all aspects of the sit lamp. And I, I will assure you that it will be very beneficial for your exam and for your practice as well. Because the rule is simple. If you see well, you will do well. If you cannot see what you are examining, then you are unlikely to reach a correct diagnosis and the correct management. So here we start. What are the contents of this lecture? We will start by the, some introduction about the sit lamp, then examination techniques, some special tasks, and uh, finally we will cover the ophthalmic lenses. So let me give, me, give you just a, um, like a brainstorming. Why do you think that we, we invented the sit lamp? What is the value of the sit lamp? Well, the value of the sit lamp, we need to examine the eye. So why not we just examine the eye by just our naked eyes? I think that the, mis the, the first thing that may come to your mind, well, the eye is, uh, well, it is dark. It will, it will not be uh, very visible because we need a source of light. So we need a source of light that will make the eye lighten. So this is one thing. What are other problems in visualization of the eye? Well, the eye is a small, it is a small structure. So we need to have a better view, a larger view of it. So we need to put a microscope. So the microscope will give us a larger view of the eye. Okay, so this is the second thing. The third thing, well, the eye looks flat because I'm viewing only with one microscope by single eye. So I can't appreciate the depth perception and the eye already have different structures that are present in layers, cornea, then anterior chamber, then the iris. So I need depth perception. So we put another microscope. So you can see with your both eyes instead of one eye. Okay, what else? We have a problem, another problem is the defocus. Like if the light is focused at one area in the, in the cornea, the microscopes can be focused on the iris and vice versa. If the microscopes are focused on the cornea, then the light will be focused on the iris. So how can we make the both light and the microscope have the same focus? We put them on a handle, like we put them on a same mechanical system that will make the focus each time the same focus of the light will be the same focus of the microscope. Also, what could be another problem? It is the transparency. Well, the eye is a transparent structure. So I need for transparent structures to detect the layers. 
And in, if I have just a simple microscope with a light and I cannot detect the layers of these transparent structures like the cornea and the lens. So we have a slit. This slit will allow only a slit beam of the light to pass through the, the transparent structures so that I can detect any kind of increasing in the thickness or decrease in the thickness or any lesions present within the different layers of these structures. So from all these, by solving all these problems, we invented the slit lamp. We reach it, how, we, uh, how can we uh, solve our problems to visualize the eye for better illumination and the better visualization? Okay, so this is just a quick brainstorming that we are inventing the slit lamp by, uh, by mounting a, a light source with a microscope that both of them are, uh, are mounted together on a, on, on a mechanical system that makes the focus at the same time on the eye with illumination, with observation by, from binocular microscopes on the, on the eye so that the eyes always have the same focus of the light will be the same focus of microscope. So the slit lamp by microscopy is a high power binocular microscope with a slit shaped illumination source, specially designed for different optically translucent tissues of the eye. And translucent meaning that it will allow the light to pass through them so we can examine their layers. Like this, this is what is meant by a slit lamp. We are having a slit beam over the cornea, it will be over the iris, over the lenses, so we can detect the layers in details. So how can it enhance in examination? It will enhance examination by excellent image quality with binocular stereoscopic view, since that we are having the virtue of binocular vision, flexible illumination and magnification, and it also provides a room for special attachments like use of applanation geometry, like use of the special lenses and other diagnostic tests. The types of microscope are uh, depending on according to the illumination. So according to illumination, some microscopes have illumination housing from below, like the Zeiss microscope. So the illumination is coming from the below. On the other hand, the haggish trait, the illumination is coming from the above. There is housing, and this housing will provide light from above. This is, can be according to the illumination. According to the magnification, the magnification in the slit lamps can be divided into two types. The green off type, which in which the magnification can be increased by a lever. This is a flip lever that you can switch right and left to increase the magnification or to decrease the magnification. Or the most, most slit lamps now are using the magnification by a knob, which is this knob has, uh, it can uh, utilize the principle of a Galilean telescope as we are going to see now. Other kinds of sit lamps or other types of sit lamps are the handheld sit lamps, which can be used for handicap, for children, for uncooperative patients, and for comatose patients. So what is the optical principle of the sit lamp? This also can be asked in details. All optics of the sit lamps are asked in the exams. The first thing in the sit lamp is the eyepieces. These eyepieces has a st astronomical telescopic system. What is meant by astronomical telescopic system? That this telescopic system has con two convex lenses. These two convex lenses are separated by the distance of their focal length, and they inverse the image. So the kind of image I see through this astronomical telescope is inverted, okay? Again, these eyepieces contain astronomical telescope. Then after this, we can, found, we can find that the, 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 the both telescope system produce inverse image. As I told you, this, uh, this image will, or this uh, astronomical telescope will produce inverse image. So we need an everting prism. The everting prism here is called the poro prism. This is a right angled prism or poro prism. This is uh, like, act by total internal reflection. So when the light is striking this prism, it will undergo total internal reflection through this prism and now get back to the eye. So you can see that the brown, the brown light was below and the blue was above. 
when it is coming out from the boro prism, the brown is above and the blue is below. So when it, this, this reversed image will be reversed again by the astronomical telescope, the eye will see an erect image. Okay, so this is the principle and the rule of the poro prism present here in this housing. After this, you can find a beam splitter and this beam splitter allow the observation of the same view and the recording of the image by image capturing device. Like we can do a beam splitter here, placing a mobile phone or an image recorder or a camera or connected to a screen. This is, can be done by this image splitter, which is also present on the surgical microscope. Then we have the magnification. The magnification changer it is a Galilean telescope that has plus lens and the minus lens separated by the distance of their focal length. And by changing this top, you are changing different sets of Galilean telescopic lenses of plus and the minus lenses, leading to increasing and decreasing the magnification. So the base of magnification here is this Galilean telescopic system. So it will be a very important advantage of the set lamp. However, the main disadvantage of it is that it will cause increase in the length of a set lamp, leading to the, um, the leading to, to that uh, the the maneuver sometimes can be difficult. Like if you are removing a foreign body from the patient's cornea, you need to straight your hands and causing fatigue. Also, if you are doing a PRP or pen return photocoagulation, it will it make your hand outstretched. So you need a hand support because of this uh, in, in length of the slit lamp. And finally, the objective lens, which is the lens facing the object. It is a convex lens. Okay, it is simple, the optical principle of the slit lamp. Okay, so here we have the, this principle of parafocality. You remember when I was telling you that uh, the, the set lamp has the same focus or the, the, the viewing system is, or the microscope have the same focus like the illumination system. This has depend on the principle of parafocality. So both the illumination arm and the viewing arm will focus on the eye at the same position or at the same level because they are both mounted on a mechanical system that will make always the same structure of the eye in focus by the microscope and by the lightning system. Let's now discuss the part of the slit lamp. So you should know every single detail and every single part of the slit lamp. So the parts of the slit lamp are divided into observation system, illumination system, and mechanical system. What is the observation system? It is simply the microscope. It is the compound microscope, like, like you see, which will provide enlarged stereoscopic image to the observer. And it provides a large working distance away from the patient's eye, which will provide a room for manipulations. So like, as I told you, if we are doing uh, a, a PRP or we are doing and or are you doing YAG laser and we are holding a lens or we are removing a corneal foreign body, this will need some working distance between you and the patient. And also it has this magnifier. It is a, here a lever magnifier, which will be important for changing the details or changing the uh, view of the details. So what are the components of the uh, viewer system? We have the eyepiece. As we mentioned, we have the prism housing, which contain the poro prism. Then we have the magnification, which can be um, the, the, the normal or the Galilean telescope. And finally, the objective lens. All these are mounted on an arm that is connected to the mechanical system. Okay, you can see this is the, the complete illustration of the sit lamp. The parts, uh, the other parts is the illumination system. This is the illumination arm. What is the purpose of the illumination arm? It provides bright illumination and adjustable slit beam of light. It is bright it is because of the halogen bulb. It is adjustable of the, because of the virtue of these screws. And also it is slit so that I can examine the transparent structures of the eye. 
So what are the components? It contains light source, condenser lens system, slit and other diaphragm, filters, projecting lens, and reflecting mirrors or prisms. So you can see, so this is like, I forgot to, Okay, I just need to adjust something, some, some, something here. So this is the light control. This is the light housing. And this is the filter control. This is the, how can we control the filters? This is the green or the red free and neutral density filter and others. This is the slight height control. This is the chin rest. Okay, I need, let me just uh, exit now. I don't want it to be like that. Okay, I am done. So let me share you again my screen. Okay, so we are talking about the, uh, the illumination arm. So to start by the light source, can see here, this is the light source. And there is an indicator for the slide height, the slit height. So it is one millimeter, two millimeter, three millimeters or so. And this is a knob for the slit height control. And also uh, this is a filter control. You can control the filters from here. And then this is an inclined mirror so that when the light is falling down from above, passing through the filters, and then it reflects from and passing through the slit, then it will reflect from this mirror to the patient's eye. There is here a decentering screw that we will uh, tell what is the value of this decentering screw in in few minutes. And this is a tilting lash that we can be tilted. And, and also I will tell you what is its value. And this is the slit width control that we are controlling the slit width from it. The mechanical system is consists of uh, three main parts. That is the table, the positioning frames, and the joystick. 
So what is the function of this mechanical system that it should position and adjust the patient and the observer? So both of them will be facing each other and it will control the both the illumination arm and the viewing arm, the, both the illumination and the microscope. So it will connect them together by this joystick and provide a base for the other parts. So what, what are the, con the parts of con uh, making this mechanical system? In this frame of the head patient, of the patient's head, there will be this, uh, this headrest, and this is the chin rest. I should have been put them here as well. So this is the lateral canthus alignment. The patient should align his head here. And this is the viewing arm, which is um, mounted to the compound microscope. There should be here a slit lamp look and the motorized table and low friction plate that will, uh, at which the, 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 the slit lamp is moving on, the power switch and the chin rest adjustment, the joystick and the supporting pad. Okay, so these are the every single detail about the structure or the anatomy of the set lamp. So this was like a quick interview, uh, or sorry, quick uh, saying a quick interview because I'm having a, a quick interview next uh, next Thursday or next Wednesday of a cornea consultant in the UK. So I'm still thinking about it. Okay, so we have here an examination technique. Uh, and the examination technique, we, this is the most important here is the, the diff, what are the different examination techniques in the, in the either direct or indirect. So let me first start by the examination steps. How can we examine the patient? We switch the power on and unlock the base screw, then cleaning the forehead band, if the patient, there are some paper st strips here, so we are removing this paper strip from the chin rest and comfortable sitting of the patient and the examiner counseling the patient, proper positioning of the patient, target fixation, and then adjusting of the eyepiece to correct for the examiner's refractive error and the interpupillary resistance. So we can correct for the examiner uh, IPD, correct for the examiner's refractive error from uh, these eyepieces. And if there is a children or if there is a child, they can stand or they can sit on the parent's lap like this or kneel on a stable chair. So we have three options for children. For examination of children, they can stand or they can sit on the parent's lap or sit on a stable chair. In the clinical procedure, we are doing systematic examination for eyelid, for lid margin, tear film, conjunctiva, cornea, equus humor, iris, lens, and the anterior vitreous. Okay. Regarding the illumination techniques, so we have two knobs. This knob is used for slit width control knob. So by uh, screwing this slit width knob control, we are making the slit as narrow as possible for, um, for certain kinds of examination or we can increase it for diffuse illumination. So this is, this is how can we use this knob. We are just making it, if we wanted to make it narrow, so I'm going to show you now in the optical sections and others. So we make it narrow. If we are, if we want to make it diffuse for, uh, for diffuse direct illumination, we just increase the, this knob. Also, we can use the slit angle rotation. This, while if we are using moving this slit beam, we know that we can change the slit beam height control from this knob. But if we rotated it along this scale, this 45, 44, 90, uh, 135 scale, by rotating it horizontally, we are changing the orientation of the slit beam. We can make it vertical, make it horizontal, oblique, and so on. So that it is very important to measure the dimensions of different lesions, such as corneal ulcer, such as a retinal mass. This can be done by uh, rotating the beam and then adjusting its length. The tilting lash that I told you about, this tilting lash, how, what is the value? 
The tilting column here is to avoid the reflections from the fundus. Like when you are using the fundus and you are using an auxiliary lens, sometimes you are annoyed by the reflections coming from the light uh, from the reflected from the fundus. So how can you avoid it? You can just tilt the, 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 the auxiliary lens a little bit or you can do a tilting in the viewing arm or sorry, in the illumination arm, the tilting light column, you can doing this little uh, tilt to avoid these reflections. Okay, let's now come to the most important part of our lecture, which is the illumination methods. The illumination methods, they can be uh, differentiated into two broad categories. First of all, the direct illumination and the indirect illumination. So what is the difference or what is meant by direct and indirect? When you are illuminating an object or illuminating a structure and you are viewing the same structure, then this is mean or this is what is meant by direct illumination. Again, if you are illuminating a structure and you are viewing the same structure, this is called direct illumination. On the other hand, if you are illuminating a, a, a structure and you are viewing another structure, then this is called indirect illumination. You are illuminating a structure and viewing a different structure. Okay. So what are the different types of direct illumination? Diffuse illumination, focal illumination, which can be classified into parallel pipe, optical section, conical beam, and specular reflection. On the other hand, the indirect illumination can be classified into sclerotic scatter, iris retroillumination, fundus retroillumination, or let, let it make more, or let's say make it more accurate. It is retroillumination from the fundus. And finally, the iris trans illumination. So all these are indirect illumination techniques. <laughs> 